Senator Chambliss. Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman, and uh, gentlemen, thanks for your service. Thanks for your leadership. Uh, Admiral uh, Hargetzel, um, uh, we've heard uh, reports about the F-35 and testing breaking cables on the carrier. Anything to that, or what kind of report can you give us on that? I'm sorry, sir, F-35 breaking cables on the carrier. Um, so I have no knowledge of, of that uh, report or anything. We have not uh, begun to do any real testing on the, the where, where we are today on the C variant is uh, confirming the static uh, conditions, if you will, the static design of that airplane, which has gone very well in areas where we've actually un uncovered some things. We've uh, uh, places to restore static margin and fatigue margin have been put in place. That's the recent uh, KeelWeb um, um, correction. That has actually been implemented on um, the, the CV, um, CF, sorry, 5, and will be actually backfitted into 3, and 3 it's actually in as well, so you can actually go and see that modification in place, and it will be now production modified as we go forward. All so right. Well, if, if what I've asked you about is a rumor, and I hope it is, uh, but I'd like to put it to bed, could you just follow up in writing on that and just do yes, whatever sir, I will tell you needs to be it's done. It's definitely a rumor, a but I will follow up. That. If I could, sir. Thank if you. I could. Uh, Senator, if I, could, I believe you're referring to the uh, stresses on the keel beam of the aircraft, uh, not just not the arrested landing, but the catapult. And so that was determined to, uh, through modeling that the, uh, the transfer of stresses from the catapult stroke on the aircraft carrier would uh, potentially cause um, some cracking in the main beam of the aircraft. That was uh, uh, de determined and learned very early, and just one aircraft uh, is delivered, and that's actually a test model. So that, uh, that fix has been already implemented. So any further uh, aircraft that will be delivered will have that repair already installed. So. Okay. Those Thank are the you. kinds of things, Senator, if I could, that we're finding when you have the keel web structure you're talking about. There are other examples that we found in our static testing, which has gone forward very well on all three variants, by the way. And, but it's a kind of thing you'd expect to find now and then be able to uh, make adjustments to it. Okay. Admiral, I want to go back to your numbers on this gap, and let's talk about how we're going to fill that. Um, I'm concerned about two issues there. Number one, obviously, is, is the gap itself. And my understanding is uh, 2008, you, the Navy projected an optimistic shortfall of 125 strike fighters by 2017. But now subsequent reports uh, project that that may grow to 243 by 2018. 129 for the Navy, 114 for the Marine Corps. That, coupled with the fact that today the Navy, um, uh, particularly uh, from uh, the very important carrier-based operations, have no first-day capability in any theater where the enemy has sophisticated SAMs. And we know that uh, if we send those airplanes in there, we're going to have significant loss. So. If you will um, uh, address that shortfall for me, tell me how you're going to fill that shortfall. Um, Senator Chambliss, the, 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 the Navy had uh, looked at their shortfall numbers and had reached the numbers you had uh, you articulated as when we came into the, the most recent, which was the, uh, the restructured ramp of the JSF, that put the number back up on the order of what you had there for uh, uh, 243 or that number, thereabouts, <coughs> that number. I mentioned all the levers, if you will, that we're looking at doing across the Navy and Marine Corps to bring that number, to manage that inventory, and we're committed to managing that inventory. Again, things like uh, bringing on additional ENF squadrons, productive ratios, um, changing um, primary mission authorization on some squadrons that are expeditionary or for UDP. And also looking how we manage, as uh, Admiral Philman said, bureau number by bureau number, both in terms of fatigue life as well as flying hours to know we can uh, manage that inventory. And we're also looking to do things like high flying hour inspections, which will give us additional hours on the legacy Hornets we have. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, we can inspect our ways so far, and also, by the way, depot level efficiencies. We can go so far to a point where we believe we can get to about 177, then we're going to need to do some service life extension programs, which is a POM 12 issue fund we'll come forward with, to know how many of those aircraft we would 
have to slept to get them to 10,000 hours, to bring our number, manageable number down in the peak years you mentioned of 17, 18, of about 100 or less of an inventory management. Even with that number, we believe we can reduce that number some more by further efficiencies, whether it be in a, a depot or other areas we can uh, comment to. And I, and I would ask uh, uh, General Troutman or Admiral Philman to comment. Senator. Uh, let, let me, uh, yes, before sir. you comment, General, you haven't mentioned uh, filling it with additional uh, FA-18s. Is there any, uh, any proposal to do that? And uh, General, please. Senator, I think the, the current plan is to buy, buy another 124 F-18 ENFs, which will buy out the POR of 515. It's important to understand how many airplanes we're talking about here. 635 Legacy Hornets, 515 ENFs, 680 uh, JSFs, 150 AV-8s. The nation has spent a lot of money on TAC Air for the Department of the Navy. I think it's incumbent upon us to manage these assets to the best of our ability, and that's what you're hearing when you're hearing us talk about managing these assets. We're trying to do it in a way that gets us to the vitally needed fifth generation strike fighter, the joint strike fighter, uh, while also taking care of the, the, the key issues that, that face us in a war fighting venues that we may encounter over the next decade. The reason that these numbers fluctuate so much, sir, is because the model is very susceptible to the kinds of assumptions that you put in the front end. You can manipulate the front end almost any way that you want to manipulate it in order to have the number come out to any specific number that you want. It's almost impossible, frankly, to predict eight years from now, specifically, how many short, shortfall airplanes we're going to have, even if the ramp on JSF stayed precisely as we think it's going to occur today, and that's, that's doubtful. The, the uh, Lockheed's been incentivized, frankly, to beat the ramp that's, uh, that's laid out now, and they think that they can give us more tails between now and 18. I'll just give you one more example, and then I'll close. In FY09, uh, the model predicted we were to try 15 uh, Legacy Hornets. We had tried three Legacy Hornets. So right there, we, we, we made a plus 12 on the kinds of uh, numbers that uh, had come into you in previous sessions and with the numbers that you uh, talked about. The best that we can do, and believe me, we've spent a lot of time on this over the past several months, the best that we can do is what Admiral Chazel said, which is in about 2018, we'll have a shortfall of about 100 jets given the management levers that, that, uh, that we intend to apply, and we can take that even lower by finding some depot uh, efficiencies. Uh, I'm incredibly confident that if we can keep Joint Strike Fighter on track, the Department of the Navy can manage their TAC air inventory successfully. Senator Chambliss, if I could, uh, one point, um, the 124 aircraft that General Troutman mentioned, he's, he indicated ENF, actually that's a combination of ENF and Growler, and so that's the, the G, the electronic attack variant. So. When we had, um, uh, at the time, we had approximately 89 aircraft in 2009 that we were going to look to continue to finish out with, and we ended up with nine additional ENF and 26 additional e, uh, F and 18 Gs, which is the electronic variant. That put our number up to 124, as mentioned, to finish the procurement in 2013, sir. But, but if I could add, Admiral Archazel is exactly right. I, I did make an error on the 124, but the, the POR is 515 uh, Super Hornets, and that's what we're headed towards. That's true. Well, I hope uh, that your optimistic view about the F-35 uh, comes to fruition, but with the problems we've seen to date, um, uh, and the date keeps slipping, the IOC date keeps slipping, and General Troutman, I, I think you've tested your variant on, on the F-35, and I don't know what kind of confidence you have in that variant right now, but that um, uh, that's probably going to continue to be an issue. But what does concern me is that we're talking about spending tax dollars on um, really um, um, a fighter that um, is second or third generation. Um, and I'm not sure that's the best expenditure of our money. So uh, as we move forward with this, I, I hope, General you, Admiral, you're correct that 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 optimistic view of the F-35 uh, ramp production is going to be there for us. Thank you, Senator Trembles.